is not one of my favorites. <laughs> you saw a falling star, and then he was like, hey Charles, illustrate it for me. <laughs> He's also not very interesting. <laughs> so that was how a stardust was born. <laughs> Stardust by Neil Gaiman is not one of my favorites. <laughs> Reading these in publication order is making me realize how much um, I personally feel he has improved over time because his earlier books are my least favorites. I just never really thought about it in timeline uh, Timeline wise, I just, these are just Neil Gaiman books. So yeah, um, looking at when I, I laid them out in publication order, I already kind of noticed that I was like, ah, the early ones are the ones I don't like as much. <laughs> so Stardust, I am on record as saying this is one of my, if not my least favorite, then one of my least favorite game books. And I'm happy to report that I did like it better the second time. But is it a new favorite? So I want to talk about a few things uh, related to Stardust. Obviously, like, you know, just a review, like how I felt about it this time. Um, but I kind of want to talk about the origin of it, um, what led Gaiman to write it. And um, the reason I want to talk about that is for similar reasons that I kind of talked about that with Neverwhere, because I think it informs the type of story that it ends up being, like what we get in Stardust. And it also, I think, is helpful to know that when you are going to read it and when you are yourself assessing it. I think it is helpful to know how something came to be and with all the baggage that comes with that potentially, as well as what the project of something was initially, I always think is very important to know. That doesn't mean that you have to like something. You can dislike the project of something, but I still think it's important to know what that project is so you can judge it more fairly. Judgment is always subjective, but criticizing a romance novel for not having enough grimdark action in it is pretty unfair because a romance novel is not really like that's not the project of a romance novel, if you see what I mean. So I don't personally like romance novels very much because they don't have a lot of grimdark action, but I can't really hold that against a romance novel because it's not trying to do that. So all that to say, that's what I kind of want to go over with Stardust because again, I think it's important to know what it's set out to be and whether or not it succeeds at that. So if you don't know, um, Stardust was originally published by DC Comics as a as an illustrated book. Neil Gaiman was chatting with an illustrator friend of his, uh, Charles Vess, I believe. Uh, yes, Charles Vess. <laughs> I checked my notes. And the two of them worked together on it, uh, not just Gaiman writing it and then saying, hey, dude, illustrate it. Like they worked on it together and um, some of the text was even changed to fit the illustrations that Charles was producing. And so this was published by DC Comics, but almost concurrently, um, because Gaiman still retained the rights to the prose, and he was also approached um, about publishing a prose version of it, so then he also did that because he had the rights to it as well. So I've only ever read the prose version, and now I have also listened to the audiobook version of it. I have never read the DC comic version of it. So that's sort of like, um, I don't know, more structurally, more like brass tacks how it came to be. But how the story of Stardust came to be was um, there was a couple different things that inspired Neil Gaiman. Really three things that inspired Neil Gaiman. First, he was interested in writing a fairy tale for adults akin to other pre-Tolkienian fantasy, specifically such as Let in the Mist by Hope Merlees. There is other pre-Tolkienian fantasy that he was influenced by, but that's a big one. Number two, he saw a wall in a field in rural England, just like in the middle of the field. And you know, Gaiman being Gaiman looked at that wall and was like, what if fairy was on the other side of that wall? Maybe I should write something about that. Maybe I should write a book called Wall. So he had that in the back of his mind. And then the third thing is that he saw a falling star and he thought to himself, what if when that star fell, it was a person? And he then he put together that that star falling should be connected with wall, that she would fall into the fairy realm beyond the other side of wall and put those ideas together and decided to write a pre-Tolkienian-esque fantasy story about a star falling on the other side of the wall in fairyland. And then he was like, hey, Charles, illustrate it for me. <laughs> so that was how a stardust was born. So approaching reading the text, as I said, I have never read the illustrated version of it. I kind of want to, but again, Stardust isn't one of my favorites, which is another uh, one big reason why I haven't, because it wasn't like, I love this so much, I want more. Let me get the illustrated version. It was like, okay, that was fine. I'm sure the illustrated one is nice, if I'm honest. If it was illustrated by Chris Riddell, I would have read it by now. <laughs> but so what this book very much is not, is the movie. Now I saw the Stardust movie when it came out. I'm not sure that I knew Neil Gaiman existed <laughs> other than like possibly his name like coming across my awareness at some point. Like I can't say I had literally never heard of Neil Gaiman, but I didn't really know who Neil Gaiman was when the movie came out. In fact, I probably became more aware that Neil Gaiman existed because like the credits of Stardust are like based on the novel by Neil Gaiman. And I was like, oh, 
and I really, really love the movie Stardust. And so I wasn't like immediately after, it was years after the movie came out and I'd seen it many, many times that I finally sat down to read Stardust. But still I went into it going, ooh, like I love that movie so much. I'm excited to read a book like, or the book that it was based on, it must be great. And the movie has been compared to, I've compared it, I think I compared it to that before I heard anyone else compare it to that. Not to say that, like, I coined that comparison. I'm just saying I think uh, anyone watching the movie would independently arrive at this comparison. It is very much like The Princess Bride, which is also based on a book. And the book The Princess Bride I also don't care for very much, but the book The Princess Bride is a lot more like the movie The Princess Bride. There's a lot more of like a one-to-one, -one, like these are similar in tone and style. And so I did kind of, I didn't really like Princess Bride the book, like I said. Um, so picking up Stardust the book, I was like, well, hopefully this is better than Princess Bride, but I'm still expecting it to be like pretty much like the movie. With Obviously there will be changes, it will be different, they're seldom the same. And I was quite surprised. Um, when I read Stardust at how not like the movie it is. It's really, really different from the movie. The plot is pretty much the same. They haven't really changed much about the plot. That's not what's different. The movie, as I say, is a, like The Princess Bride, the movie, in tone, in humor, um, in the types of like action and adventure. Like those things aren't really in the book Stardust. So the, the broad strokes, you know, there's a young man in the town called Wall, named Wall because it's next to the wall that separates them from Maryland. A star falls from the sky and he tells the girl that he's in love with that he's gonna go get that star for her. So he goes into fairy and the star is a girl named Yvain. And you know, adventure ensues. There's other people who are trying to find the star as well. So those are the same plot beats in the book and in the movie. That's That remains the same. So it's kind of amazing how different the two can be given it's pretty much the same plot. And again, it's all just down to tone, really. The film has a lot of adventure, the film has a lot of humor, the film has a lot of romance. It's just more emotive and grand um, and funnier. The book wasn't really trying to be any of those things. <laughs> The book is a lot more akin to Lud in the Mist by Hope Murleys, which um, I very recently read. So having read Lud in the Mist and now reading Stardust, I gained a new appreciation, both because I haven't watched the movie Stardust in a long time, I have read Stardust before, so I know what not to expect, and now I also had read Lud in the Mist, which heavily inspired it. So picking up Stardust now, it was a very, very different experience because again, I knew what to expect and could judge it more on its own merits, on its own terms, um, and see what it was trying to do as opposed to being upset at it not trying to do the things that I was expecting it try to try to do. It's not just the tone and the style of the story that's similar to Lead in the Mist. He makes some direct references to Lead in the Mist. For example, the debatable hills, which are prominently featured in Lead in the Mist. There is a reference to, uh, there's a point where someone asks Tristran the, either what is in that direction or um, which direction they would need to go to get to the debatable hills and like it's not really part of the plot at all So I'm fairly certain it was literally just put in there because Neil wanted to nod to let in the mist So if one has read pre-Tolkienian fantasy I think one would in picking up Stardust particularly again let in the mist if you pick it up I think instead of being like what the heck is this? This is not like normal fantasy This is not like the movie Stardust your reaction would be like oh This is like let in the mist. I know what we're doing So it's a quite different experience if you know what you're getting yourself into So Stardust is, like I said, it's not my favorite and it still is not my favorite, but I do think it has some definite strengths. The film is very humorous, which isn't to say that the book is not humorous at all. It is humorous more in the way that Light in the Mist is, where it's more satirical, it's more sardonic, it's more sort of social commentary, as opposed to like slapstick, adventure situation comedy, which is what the movie does. So we get more sort of like commentary on the hypocrisy of polite society. We get uh, jabs at cultural norms and a generally sardonic tone about everything. So it's not wondrous and magical. It's not like, oh, wow. It's it's more like, oh, isn't this strange? And our main character is a bit of a twat. There is a like a, a mocking undertone to almost everything. So rather than heroic and epic battles and epic climactic sequences and things like that, we have tricks, we have cleverness, we have coincidences, we have technicalities, things like that, which is again very reminiscent of the way the plot unfolds, the way that um, villains are interacted with in Love in the Mist. So I really disliked that the first time I read Stardust because I was expecting the bigger, the more heroic, the more adventurous. And it's not doing that, it was never trying to do that. It having that kind of a tone is something that I actually do really enjoy the second time around, knowing what to expect. And it does have some clever barbs and witticisms and it's it's charming and quirky. And it's kind of hard to put into the words what the tone is like, because it's not like constantly ripping things to shreds and it's not constantly like sarcastic and cruel, but it's not like pleasant and nice either. So really the only comparison I can make is that it's like reading Lud in the Mist. Or also um, I compared Lud in the Mist in our live show 
um, to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. So the only thing that's like that that I've read that's more modern is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Stardust is more like that in tone. So why don't I love Stardust even now with the benefit of knowing what it was trying to be and what it was inspired by, blah, 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 blah. Well, I do think Lead in the Mist is a much more successful version of this type of story. While Stardust does include social commentary, it does include strangeness and fairy tricks and all that, I don't feel that there's a cohesive theme, a cohesive kind of like, like overall criticism that it's trying to levy at society or at the culture or any one particular thing. It's just kind of like, a scattering of sardonic wit leveled at no one in particular. Which is also strange because the plot of Stardust, which I briefly outlined, it's kind of strange to approach that plot with this sort of tone. Lead in the Mist, it doesn't have any like heroic figures. It doesn't really have a chosen one. It doesn't really have like a good versus evil even setup where you could explore, where, where you would expect it to unfold in that way. Whereas Stardust is. Stardust does have a chosen one. Uh, Tristran is a chosen one. Yvaine is a love interest. There are evil witches who are villains. It just, it feels much more like an adventure story with a, that should have like a hero's arc and a climax and all this sort of thing. Like that is the story arc that is present in it in the bones of the story. It's just being told instead in the style of something like Blood in the Mist. Whereas the film Stardust does lean into this having a hero, making Tristran a hero, making Yvain more of a love interest and having her become more human over time, even though she's a star. In the book, Yvain just kind of stays inhuman and star-like and kind of grumpy and never like becomes more human, never changes over time. Her and Tristran's relationship doesn't really change over time. So the movie leans into sort of like humanizing them and making them grow and making them kind of grow up over the course of the adventure. It leans into the adventure side of this because we have a series of quests or a general quest and a series of adventures on that quest in the book, but it's kind of like passed over in this like hand wavy sardonic way. The, the film is like, no, let's like, let's really do some adventure. Like let's have them do adventurous things and like really like have the score be like, let's do adventure. And the book, like, it's just like, no, we're not doing adventures, even though technically this is a book about an adventure. And then again, the, the ending of the book kind of ends in this more sort of like, not grand, more satirical, more kind of like, um, and that was the ending. And it's not like perfectly quite happy and no one's really learned anything. And <laughs> that's just the ending. Ta-da! Which kind of, even Let in the Mist had a little more of like a cohesive conclusion to the theme of the story that still wasn't like a happy fairy tale ending, but it felt more like a, I see the point was made. And then again, the film of Stardust, it does since it's leaned into making him heroic and making her a love interest and making the villains villainous and having him grow and learn and overcome these odds and everything, then it leans into making the conclusion also quite grand and epic and like a big ta da 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 kind of like ending. And the ending of the film, again, it's not a satirical ending. It's a truly happy ending. And the ending in the book, I mean, it's more or less a happy ending, but it's just kind of like cold and satirical. So you don't kind of like leave the book with this kind of like warm glow the way you do, or at least I do, in watching the film. The character of Tristran, who is the main chosen one hero type character, like I say, in the beginning of the film and in the beginning of the book, they're quite similar. But then the book doesn't really have him grow or change that much, whereas the film really makes him change a lot. So that by the time he comes back, there's there's words about this lip services page of this in the book where he comes back and everyone's he's unrecognizable because he's like been on so many adventures, he's and he's tanned and he's like been through so much that they're like, oh my gosh, that can't be the same Tristran that left, you know, to go find the star. So which really comes across as he's like, you know, he's dirty and tan and like, you know, he's been rough in it. As opposed to when he comes back in the movie and he's you know he looks physically different like his hair looks different and he's tanner and, but he's also matured a lot in how he's carrying himself how he's engaging with people um it's just a, an entire like a marked difference in the entirety of his person and tristran not being that way in the book isn't necessarily a problem like he can stay not being a heroic cool interesting person like he doesn't have to become the heroic great guy that's fine but in the book, not only is Tristran not really a great guy, he's also not very interesting. <laughs> like he's not interesting to read about. And the stuff that's happening around him is also not that interesting to read about because it's not really like all tied to this overall theme or overall message because there isn't one. So in conclusion, <laughs> Stardust is it's fun. It's good. It's, it's written well. The prose is very good as usual. There are some fun quirks. 
fun jokes. There's a, a charm to it, undoubtedly. And because this pre-Tolkienian style of fantasy has fallen out of favor, then Stardust, by emulating it, does kind of stand out from the pack. Now, unfortunately, in my opinion, Stardust is a rather pale imitation of pre-Tolkienian fantasy. Let in the Mist is much better. But the book does have clever bits of prose, typical of Gaiman. The gentle witticisms and sardonic observations kind of trickle by as the book weaves its little spell. But while I appreciate the book more now, I do maintain that the movie Stardust is better, and certainly the book Let in the Mist is better than the book Stardust. But if it's your fave, let me know why. What is it that I'm missing? What is it that I'm not getting? What is it you get out of it that I'm not? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times well, definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you.